Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord again. We give honor and praises unto God on today because He is a great God and He is greatly to be praised. And thank you. I praise God for just one, one more opportunity to stand in His presence, in the presence of the saints of God. We bring you greetings this morning from the Bethel Outreach Church located at 16134 Hannah Road, where the Spirit of the Lord abides. We thank you for those that are joining us by Facebook Live or either in the sanctuary. We thank you, praise God, for he has been good to us. And we just are so grateful unto him for being here. One more time, hallelujah. There were so many this morning that weren't able to get up out of the bed of affliction or did not open their eyes on this morning. But we are grateful that we are here. I was created for praise. I was created to praise him. So I counted robbery to enter into his gates and to not give him thanksgiving, not give him praise, hallelujah. He continues to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, I can even ask a thing in the name of Jesus. That I don't care what it looks like, hallelujah, God has got my best interest at heart, hallelujah. He said these light afflictions, we will go through some things, hallelujah, but I still trust him, hallelujah. We're in the midst of the storm, I still trust him, hallelujah. I call on his name, hallelujah, and he answers, hallelujah. And it's not always the answer that I want, hallelujah, but he answers, hallelujah. And he says, I got you, hallelujah. Don't you worry about it, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Because you're not going to grow any taller by worrying about it. And some of these things are a process that you have to go through. But I thank him for being God. For being consistent with me, hallelujah. So I had no choice but to be consistent with him, hallelujah. He is the creator of all earth. He has been with me down through the years, through every trial, every tribulation, through marriage, and children, and, and jobs, and so many other things, hallelujah. He has been that one constant force. So I thank him for that on today. I thank him for being a gracious God, for being a good God. We coming back and forth across these dangerous highways. We see accidents on the side of the road and we get a little disturbed talking about only holding up traffic. But thank God, it could have been you. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. We get calls and they tell us so and so is going on to be with the Lord, but it could have been you, hallelujah. I said this earlier in Sunday school on this morning. Sometimes we think we've been in church so long, we've done all we can do, and we don't have anything else to give. Hallelujah. But as long as you are breathing, you still got a purpose. God has called you for this right now generation. Hallelujah. The harvest is what? It is right. It is ready for the picking. He just said we have to pray that God will send laborers to the homes in the name of Jesus. I got a right now praise, hallelujah. I will praise him ever. I will praise him ever. Praise the Lamb for sinners sin. Give him glory all you people for his blood can wash away each sin. Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from Proverbs 15. A general answer turns away anger, but a harsh word stirs up wrath. The tongue of the wise makes knowledge attractive, but the mouth of fools blurts out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere, preserving the wicked and the good. The tongue that heals is a tree of life, but a devious tongue breaks the spirit. A fool despises his father's discipline, but a person who accepts correction is sensible. The house of the righteous has great wealth, but trouble accompanies the income of the wicked. The lips of the wide broad, broadcast knowledge, but not so the heart of fools. The sacrifice of the wicked is detestable to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. The Lord detests the way of the wicked, but he loves the one who pursues righteousness. Discipline is harsh for the one who leaves the path, 
the one who hates correction, will die. Sheol and Abaddon lie open before the Lord. How much more human hearts? A mocker doesn't love one who corrects him, and he will not consult the wise. A joyful heart makes a face cheerful, but a sad heart produces a broken spirit. The discerning mind seeks knowledge, but the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. All the days of the press are miserable, but a cheerful heart has a continual feast. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Thus I have read Proverbs 15, 1 through 13. And it is blessed. We're going to ask that our pastor come and lead us in the prayer of my spirit. God bless you, everyone. Praise the Lord. It's such a blessing to be in the house of God on today as we prepare for prayer. Let us stand to our feet in reverence to God, uh, to such a loving Savior, such a wonderful God. Let us stand in reverence to Him as we bow our heads and go before the throne of grace on today. Lord God, we thank you now for your bountiful blessings. Thank you for your tender mercy. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to stand here in the presence of your people, exalting and magnifying your name. We know that you are holy, Lord God. We know that you are righteous. We know that you're just. We know that, Lord God, you're ever present. And most of all, we thank you for your presence right now in this house. Oh God, because we know that we can't move. We can't breathe. We cannot exist unless you allow it. So we come to exalt your name together as a family in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, we ask you today to bind the works of darkness. Oh God, set every demon to a flight. Lord God, if there's sickness. Oh Lord God, hallelujah, if there is struggling in their homes, in their minds in their relationships, whatever they're dealing with, whatever challenges they're faced with today, we come and we lay it at your altar, we lay it at your feet, because we know that you're able, Lord God, to work wonders, you're able to work miracles, oh God, you're still working signs and wonders, and so we praise you for this, thank you, Lord God, for the help that you placed in our bodies. Thank you, Lord God, for the joy that you placed in our souls. Thank you for the desire to be in your house to praise and exalt your name. And as we ask you to touch the lives of those that are here, look upon their family members, look upon their co-workers, look in their neighborhoods, touch and deliver and set free. Lord God, let somebody recognize your power. Let them recognize that you love them, that you care about them, that you love us so much that while we were yet in our sins, you died for the ungodly. Thank you, oh God, because when I look at my life, I see where you brought me from, and I want to say thank you. Thank you for how you gave me such a loving wife. Thank you for how you gave me such wonderful children. Thank you for how you gave me such wonderful grandchildren. Thank you, Lord, how you watch over them daily and keep them safe from danger seen and danger unseen. Oh God, we thank you for these your people that are in the house. Every family that is represented. Oh God, you brought them here that they could come together as a family in Christ and be strengthened through your word. And so today, strengthen them, oh God, I pray. Help them, Lord Jesus. Hey God, to look beyond their fears, beyond their doubts. Oh God, beyond their struggles and recognize that you are more than enough. Oh God, hallelujah, to me their need and so bless now like only you can strengthen like you only you can encourage your hearts like only you can help us give us the wisdom give us the knowledge give us the understanding that it needed so that we can do the work of Christ and that men can see your good works in our lives and begin to glorify you and magnify you for all the wonderful things that you are doing even now and we bless Bless you and we glorify your name and we magnify your name in the mighty name of Jesus. This is our prayer now and forever. We give you the glory and somebody clap your hands and give him the highest praise on today. Hallelujah. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, bless the Lord this time. 
We're going to ask our amen singers to come and we're just going to sing and worship and praise God together for certainly he is worthy of our praise. Come on, clap your hands and give God thanks. another opportunity to stand before you and to give him our best praise. Hallelujah. Um, though it looks like we're few in number, God is in the midst, and I thank him for that. Hallelujah. If you, if this is your first time here, we welcome you. And if you've been here every Sunday with us, welcome back. Hallelujah. Um, at this time, uh, for whatever reason that you decided to worship with us, um, in-house or online, uh, there is something here for you. Yeah. Whatever God has led you to be a part of this service, he has led you here for a reason. And the most important thing is that you leave better than when you came. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. At this time, we're just going to sing a couple of songs to give God praise, to give him the glory. My voice is not 100% and that is okay, but I believe by the end of worship service, it will be, hallelujah, because I can't give God my best praise. Wash me over again. Wash me.
God look over my life, I realized that it was the Lord that brought me out of sin, out of darkness, into his marvelous light. And for this reason, I am grateful that he has opened up your understanding so that you can see that you need him in your life. So that you don't have to walk around in darkness by yourself. The Lord never wants us to feel alone. He doesn't want us to feel forsaken. He doesn't want us to feel like he doesn't care. He's not concerned. That's not the kind of God that we serve. He's always concerned about us. Every intricate detail of your life. God is concerned. And many times we allow the voices around us to make us believe that God is not with us. But the Lord said, I will never leave. The Lord said, I will never forsake you. But I will be with you until the very ends of the world. Some situations you can't even share with other people. Sometimes you're hurting alone, you're struggling, and you feel like you're in darkness by yourself. It's not always that you feel in darkness. Sometimes you're actually rejoicing, and you have no one to rejoice with. You have no one, so it's not always a sad situation, it's not always a challenging situation. Sometimes it's a joyous situation, and you wish you had other people to share with. And to tell them what God has done in your life. And the Lord will always provide someone if you let him. You all believe that? Sometimes we just need to ask God, Lord, open up a door so that I can witness or share your witness with somebody else. And then give me the courage and the boldness to actually step out and tell them about what you've done. I know many of you may have had a stressful week, may have had some stress in your life, but you know what? I think everybody has a little stress in their life. But look at somebody and say, I'm so glad you made it. So glad you made it. You didn't give up, you didn't let go. You didn't let it overtake you, but you made it. And I'm glad you made it. To share this word with you on today. I pray that it will be a blessing to you on this morning. In the book of Psalms, in the 31st chapter, Psalms 31. I'm just going to read a few verses. And in reference to God's word, it reads in this manner. It says, starting at the first verse, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thy ear to me, deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for a house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privately for me, for thou art my strength. To thy hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. I have hated them that regard blind vanities. But I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy. But thou hast considered my trouble. Hallelujah. Thou hast known my soul in adversities. And has not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. Thou hast set my feet in a large room. Somebody just tell them, thank you, Jesus. Lord God, I thank you. I 
thank you for this word on this morning and I thank you for how you have kept us, how you have watched over us, how you have given us shelter, food and clothing and all the necessities and essentials. Lord God, you've given us the mind to be here today to just hear a word from you. So as we decrease, we ask you to increase, Lord God, let your word touch the hearts of your people. Strengthen them, Lord God, and help them to leave here being bold and courageous. Operating in your truth, for certainly your truth is what will set us free. Help us to walk in the liberty where Christ has set us free. And help us not to be entangled with the workers of darkness and of iniquity. For we know that they will soon be cut down like grass. But your children, Lord God, will rise up and praise thy name. Save, Lord, save. Deliver and set free. So those that are in darkness can hear the good word and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And come out of darkness into your marvelous life. And we'll be careful to praise you now and forever. And everybody will say, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated at this time. Here David is in prayer while being in distress. David wanted to let people know that my trust is in the Lord. I may be in a place of danger. I may be in a place of trouble. I may be in a place of grief. I might have been humiliated by people around me facing humiliation. But I want you to know that I implicitly trust you. I don't plan on wavering. I plan on doubting. I don't plan on going back to my own habits and my own ways of doing things. I've tried those things and they've already failed. I've already got into those conversations, sidebar conversations, and they didn't do me any good. I've already sought after the knowledge of men and they were in the same disarray that I was in. And it didn't help my situation. But David said, Lord, I'm going to trust in you. There comes a time in your life where you have to determine where you're going to put your trust. Where are you going to put your trust in? Who are you going to trust in? The Bible says some trust in chariots and some in horses. In other words, there are things that are tangible that you can put your hands on, that you can see, and that may be a symbol of strength and of power. But I'm going to put my trust in the name of the Lord. Why? Because I know that there is no other name given under heaven and earth whereby men must be saved than the name of Jesus. So Lord, I'm going to put my trust in you because I've learned that when I call on your name, something has to happen. When I call on your name, demons begin to tremble. When I call on your name, hell has to lose its grip on my life. You know, the enemy don't really care about me as an individual. But when I stand in the word of God, he has to respect what God has already said. And so we're not fighting against one another. I'm not fighting against you. I'm not fighting against my wife. I'm not fighting against my children. I'm not fighting against the deacons. I'm not fighting against the visitors. I'm not fighting against you. But there is a battle that is going on. And there is a battle that is raging. Matter of fact, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities and powers. We're wrestling against rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. So the enemy is not divided. Because he knows that a house that is divided against itself cannot stand. 
The enemy always wants to come in and divide your house. He always wants to send someone to divide because he knows if I can divide your house, then I can weaken you and I can come in and pillage and plunder and take what I want. But some of you have the understanding that the strength that I'm looking for is not my own strength. It's not by my own power. It's not by my own will. It's not by my own knowledge. And by knowing this, I can now put my trust in the Lord. I will not allow the enemy to divert my attention and cause me to be in a state of chaos. Praise the Lord because my attention is not on man. But my trust is in the Lord. It's a sad thing to be living from day to day, broken, sorrowful, sad, and have nowhere to turn for comfort. But David said, I know that even being the king in the situation that I'm in with people all around me trying to take my life, even the, my own family, I'm going to put my trust in the Lord. Because he can not only deliver me, but he can deliver my children. He can deliver my children's children. He can bless those that are around me because it's his will that we not perish. Look at somebody and say, it's the Lord's will that you don't perish. He doesn't want you to perish. But he came that you may have everlasting life. And he wants you to have everlasting life more abundantly. And so God doesn't want you to be disheartened. God doesn't want you to be downtrodden. God doesn't want you to be depressed. God doesn't want you to be broken. God doesn't want you to live a life. And then without the knowledge and the understanding of how to prosper spiritually in him. It's not always about money. God wants you to learn how to manage the resources that he's given you. But God wants you to have knowledge and understanding and wisdom. Because with wisdom, you'll know how to operate in the earth so that you can not only benefit for yourself, but for the people around you. You'll have something to offer others. God didn't call you just so you can enrich your life and forget about the people around you. We were not built to be an island. We were not built to stand alone. Amen. We were built to be in the body of Christ. Matter of fact, the Lord said, on this rock, I will build my church. And he was talking about himself. He wasn't talking about a man because men fail. We are flawed. Let me start off with myself. I had to understand that I had failures and that I was flawed before I could understand that I needed God in my life. When I came to that understanding, then the Lord can help me. Because now I recognize that I needed help. And I can ask for help and receive it freely because now I recognize I needed his power to deliver me from the shackles of sin. And David says, let me never be ashamed. In other words, I know that I walked in darkness. I know that I sinned in my life. I know that I made mistakes. But Jesus came and washed my sins away. And then Jesus stepped in and turned my life around. Gave me a new perspective on how to look at individuals that are struggling in their life. Gave me compassion. Helped me to understand that just like I failed and just like I came up short that other people are struggling in their life. And so I had to pray for the mercies of God upon them as well. But David said, I'm not going to be ashamed of God. Why? Because I've learned that, amen, that whosoever is ashamed of him, whosoever is ashamed of his word, in this adulterous generation, those that are ashamed of Christ and are willing to stand up for truth in a time where the hearts of men are failing and waxing cold and the love of many is failing and 
Bible really wants to stand on the word of God. Matter of fact, people are saying there is no absolute truth. But I'm telling you that the word of God is truth. And what we need to ask the spirit of the Lord to do is lead us and guide us so that we can operate not in our truth, but in the truth of God's word. How many of you have ever been corrected by God? How many of you ever thought you were right and the Lord had to show you that you were wrong? Maybe I'm by myself. Maybe I'm just talking to me in the church down the street. But sometimes we have made a mistake and God had to correct us. Listen, I, 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 made an, I, I gave an example earlier today. Driving down the road, somebody cuts me off. I'm upset because they cut me off and almost caused me that an accident. But in the middle of my frustration, in the middle of my aggravation, in the middle of the fact that I'm upset with them, I'm not really focused like I should be on being a safe driver or being an effective driver. And in the same moment, I cut somebody else off. While I was focused on them cutting me off. And the Lord says, see. While you are so frustrated and aggravated and not being attentive to what I told you and what I've shown you. And what I've spoken to you because you have allowed your emotional state, amen, to overtake, amen, the thought process that you should be operating in in accordance to my word. You yourself. Have turned around and did the same exact thing that you were mad at them about. And so what the Lord is saying, David is looking at his life and he's saying, not only am I going to trust the Lord, but I don't ever want to be ashamed of what God has done in my life. I don't want to ever be ashamed of where God brought me from. I don't want to eat ever be ashamed of how he cleansed me from my iniquities and my sin. I never want to be ashamed that he created in me a clean heart and that he renewed in me the right spirit. I never want to be ashamed because I can tell somebody else that he is a God that never fails and that he never lies. He never goes back on his promise. And then David remembers that only God can deliver. And he says, deliver me in that righteousness. In other words, you are the righteous judge. You are the righteous God. You're the only one that knows what is right. And so I'm leaning not to my own understanding. But in all of my ways, I'm going to acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct my path. I want to be your son. I want to be your vessel. I want to live holy. But I need to look to you because only you can deliver me from myself. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all know that the people around you are not your worst enemy? Amen. How many of y'all really know that? Amen. The people around you that you frustrated with are not your worst enemy. Amen. Guess who your worst enemy really is? I am my worst enemy. None of you can stop me from making it into heaven. If I don't make it into heaven, I can't blame one of you. I can't go back and blame my mother. I can't go back and blame my father. I can't go back and blame the situations that I lived in when I was a child. I can't go back to those things and say, this is why I miss heaven. No, when God has given you a choice, when God has opened up his word to you, when God has allowed the gospel to be preached into your midst, into your hearing, and you have heard the word of God, it is now on you to make a decision whether or not you're going to choose this day who you will serve. Will it be God? Or will it be man? Who are you going to serve? Right? Today we make a choice. And David says this. Lord, God, bow down thy ear, deliver me speedily. 
Be thou my rock and the house of defense to save me. Sometimes we find ourselves in a situation that we're on shaky ground. Our lives have been turned upside down. And the enemy has brought something in our midst that has us unstable and feeling like we cannot overcome it. But the Lord says through his servant David, David said, Thou art my rock. In other words, you're my stable place. When there's no other place that I can find, when there's nobody else that can offer me a word that's going to help me, amen, to find strength and stability, you alone are my rock. You alone are my protector. You're my protection, Lord God. And so I'm turning to you. And so, Lord, lead me and guide me and direct me in the way that I should go because I cannot in this flesh make a sound decision that's going to help me and so I'm going to give myself unto you pull me out of this net pull me out of this darkness pull me out of this despair and, and sometimes you are so entrenched in where you are that God has to snatch you out of your situation I've been myself when God had to turn it around and bring me out of my situation because I have sunk in my situation. And then I want you to remember David when he wrote this Psalms it had such power that even Jesus reached back to this Psalms and used this verse at his death. Jesus says, into thy hand I come in. My strength. If there's any body that can protect you and preserve you, preserve you, mind, body, and soul, it's the Lord. There's going to be people around you that's lying. There's going to be liars all around you. There's going to be devious people all around you. But David said, I put my trust where? In the Lord. I will be glad and I will rejoice in thy mercy. But thou hast considered my trouble. Thou hast known my soul in adversities. Some of you have suffered through some things silently. But how many of you know that God knows your adversities? He knows what your soul is suffering through. Matter of fact, he's already considered your trouble. Your trouble is real to God. Your situation is not hidden from God. And then, I want to end with this. David says this. And has not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. Thou hast set my feet in a large room. In other words, it doesn't matter how the enemy's fighting you. It doesn't matter what he's been doing in your life. God is saying to you, I'm the one that's going to liberate you. I'm the one that's going to bless you. I'm the one that's going to enlarge your coast. I'm the one that's going to cause your territory to be expanded. And so, while other people's telling you about the little things that's going to happen, I'm in the background making things happen for you. I'm moving your energy me out of your way. And then I'm causing the dark places to become light. I'm causing the crooked places to become straight. I'm making the high places come down. I'm the one that's fighting the battle. The battle does not belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. And when you begin to praise Him, and then when you begin to rejoice in Him, when you begin to make a man melody in your heart, and begin to say, Lord, I love you. I love you because when I was broken, you healed me. And then when I was sick, and then you healed and delivered me. And then when the enemy plagued my life, you set him to a flight. And then you're the one that touched my finances. And then you're the one that touched my thinking. And then you're the one that turned my situation around. I'm not going to pray. 
nobody else. I've not gonna give thanks to nobody else. But in all, all things, I'm gonna give thanks to the Lord because it's the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. If you understand that God is concerned about you, if you understand amen, that your praise creates an atmosphere for which God can come down, then you need to go ahead and open up your mouth and praise Him. That's why the psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make a boast in the Lord. Anybody boasting in the Lord on today? Anybody going to give him thanks on today? Anybody remember where he brought you from on today? Did he bring you out of darkness? Y'all act like he didn't bring you out. But I said he brought me out. That's why I praise him like I do. That's why I worship like I do. That's why I do everything to the best of my ability for the Lord because he's been so good to me. Because of this. That's why I praise him. I want to trust in the Lord. And I never want to be ashamed. I want to trust in the Lord. And I never want to be ashamed. I don't know about you, but I want that to get in my spirit. I want to trust in the Lord. And I never want to be ashamed. Why? Because he's my deliverer. Why? Because he's my fortress. Why? Because he's a strong tower. And the righteous run therein. And they are safe. Why? Amen. Because he's the one that is my mighty battle axe in the time of war. Why? Because he's the answer to every prayer. Amen. Why? Because he's the light that shineth in darkness. Amen. Why? Because, amen, he's my shelter. Amen. In the time of storm. Anybody ever been in a storm and Jesus just wrapped his arms around you? I don't know who's going to me and Jesus just steps in the middle of the storm and wraps his arm around you and reminds you I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you when everybody else has forsaken you I'll never forsake you, I'll be right here for you throughout your life I'm trusting in the Lord and I never want to be ashamed. Amen. Because God has set me in a large room. When I came to Tampa, I was young. But I had a vision and I continued to minister. We had nowhere to go. We young with young children. We had nowhere or no ability to purchase land because land was expensive. And we came all the way from South Carolina. But me and this young lady right here kept working together. And the Lord gave us a place. He established us in our careers. He helped us to move forward together, our children to grow up, have children. It may not seem like much. But the five acres that we have that we haven't even begun to really build on and land and other things that he's provided for us gives us an opportunity to expand on the work of Christ. If the people that the Lord had blessed us to minister to in this city were all here today, you couldn't even keep them in this building. But God has been good to us and we still keep pressing forward. It's not my desire to ever give up. Because I trust God. And I trust that he will never, ever fail. We fail. Men fail. But God never fails. Don't put your 
eyes on men because they will fail. But Jesus never fails. As we stand to our feet, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus.